Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and this is uh, a video called Visiting Mary, the Mother of Jesus in Heaven. Um, and uh, I just uh, was uh, looking uh, for her house and looking in the house. I saw a picture of Mary. I'm not naked, but lying in a bathing suit, um, lying against uh, a wall, and down the wall um, was cascading a waterfall uh, of warm water, and um, uh, the water come from a spring above her house, a hot spring, and uh, the water was cascading into uh, a spa, and uh, because uh, there was more uh, water coming in all the time, there was a release in the spa to uh, siphon the water out. But the water is hot um, and uh, she could just lean above. Uh, she could just lean against the wall and it's like a, a waterfall falling on her. Um, so that's uh, her bathroom. Um, uh, the water is always falling. Um, she doesn't press a button. Um, oh, actually, there is a button there. She can just press a button and, um, and the water uh, comes through the uh, roof. Otherwise, uh, the, it wouldn't uh, enter. Uh, her, her roof uh, opens up and allows the water to um, come in. If she presses the button, uh, the water flows over the roof and goes somewhere else. So she can press that. So she can lie in a spa and have a spa with friends um, and not have the water uh, coming through. But if she presses the button, the roof uh, comes off and uh, the water flows through. So that's uh, one part of the house. Um, I know Steve Jobs has uh, got a house with a waterfall that comes into his living room. Um, so water uh, features uh, uh, amazing things. So I've really uh, been looking forward to uh, having uh, this interview and doing this interview. Um, it's a real honor to uh, speak to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Um, so uh, the first question is, um, uh, what do you do in heaven? I, um, I'm really highly revered uh, by the Catholic faith, uh, not so much uh, by Protestants. People in the Protestant church don't really revere me as high as uh, people in the Catholic Church. Um, I'm just considered a normal person, a normal saint by uh, people in the Protestant Church. Uh, they know that I was Jesus' mother and uh, they sort of uh, would be happy to meet me, but I'm not uh, revered uh, very high uh, in the Protestant Church. Uh, but uh, amongst Catholics, which uh, many Catholics uh, pray prayers that will allow them to get into heaven um, and uh, their doctrine, regardless of uh, what people think, uh, they confess that Jesus died on the cross and they believe that Jesus died on the cross and they confess that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. So according to the belief, uh, they're saved. Um, they don't have to say a sinner's prayer to be saved. Um, anyway, um, I'll, I'll leave uh, you to think about that. Um, but um, I spend most of my time uh, welcoming uh, people into heaven and uh, spending time with them, uh, helping them adjust to heaven. As you can imagine, there's many thousands of people arriving in heaven each day and, uh, and um, I haven't got the time 
uh, to uh, be meeting all of them, but I make my way around and uh, meet uh, the people. Um, uh, I would say that I, I meet uh, many of the really devout uh, followers of Jesus, and um, uh, it's an honour. Um, I know uh, Protestants uh, don't revere me uh, very highly, um, but here's something to consider out of all the uh, young girls in Israel, and I was about uh, 14 years of age when I became pregnant with Jesus, um, out of all the young girls in Israel, I was the only girl that was chosen uh, to be Jesus' mother. So there was something pretty special about me, don't you think? Um, and uh, I uniquely trained him up uh, to be uh, the Messiah. So I did a good job of that, preparing him uh, for his earthly work. Um, I was sad uh, to see him go. Um, so I have a unique perspective. I've got a lot of uh, wisdom and understanding of uh, Jesus' early life and his life before 30. And uh, I'd be a helpful saint uh, for you to know. I possess a lot of uh, valuable uh, information about the life of Jesus uh, before he was in ministry and and uh, even uh, I even traveled with him uh, in his later years of ministry. Uh, so I've got a lot of information about Jesus' earthly life. So I'm pretty handy. And uh, I run classes in heaven and uh, teach people uh, the, the boy Jesus and uh, what he was like as a child and what he was like in ministry and uh, what he's like today. And uh, I've got a role, but I, I mainly um, introduce myself to people as Jesus' mother and answer their questions. People have a lot of questions about my life and how I live my life. And uh, they've got questions about Jesus. And uh, I've... Uh, developed uh, grace and humility over the course of my life and uh, I've uh, developed a lot of humility and uh, I can generally answer most people's questions about uh, my son um, and he is my son uh, he's the son of God but he's my son uh, uh, people take exception to Catholics uh, calling me the mother of God. Um, a Christian on one hand will say Jesus is God and Jesus is uh, the son of God, but co-equal with God or Jesus is God. Uh, so they take exception with uh, Catholics calling me the mother of God, but essentially they're just saying the mother of Jesus. Um, and I was his mother. I understand him really well and I spend... Uh, Sunday lunches with uh, Jesus. Um, if you consider uh, a heavenly week the same as an earthly week, um, I have a roast dinner with my son, um, with the disciples uh, every Sunday. No, we don't, but uh, I do have uh, dinner with my son. My son likes to spread himself around, um, but uh, we meet often over a meal. And uh, people are really fortunate uh, to meet me and the 12 disciples and Jesus in a room. Wouldn't you like to turn up to uh, that, uh, that meal? Wouldn't that be an exciting meal for you to sit down with the 12 uh, disciples and Jesus and me? If we got a couple of extra chairs, uh, we could... Uh, uh, fit around Peter's table in uh, Peter's house. Uh, he's got 12 seats at his table. If we put 15 there, uh, we'd be able to have Jesus, me and you there. And uh, I'm sure we could uh, put another three seats there. But uh, a couple of the saints have had uh, 
tables and chairs for 40 and uh, you could um, you could uh, be at a seat uh, there and be sitting near Jesus and me and wouldn't that be interesting so uh, everyone wants to meet me uh, but particularly the Catholic uh, people from Catholic persuasion uh, would like to meet me and uh, I like to meet them and uh, bless them and of course I can direct them to Jesus and some people think that uh, Catholics revere me over Jesus or more than Jesus and um, I can uh, once uh, a person gets to heaven they, their focus can be directed towards Jesus um, and uh, I certainly uh, don't uh, encourage uh, people to worship me and uh, it doesn't mean that I don't appear on earth. Um, uh, my appearances that have uh, been noted by people aren't all demonic um, and, uh, and that's another thing that uh, you can uh, question and uh, think to yourself about. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I welcome people to heaven. Um, I've set, sat in on the prophetic councils that Elijah and Enoch have, and uh, I've got a prophetic uh, unction in my life. Um, I, I like to uh, speak to the women prophetesses, and uh, I like to instruct the women um, and... Uh, uh, I haven't got a big position of leadership in heaven. Um, I'm uh, not the queen of heaven. Uh, queen of heaven is a demonic uh, entity. Uh, so I'm not the queen of heaven. Um, and uh, I'm not God's mother. Um, and, uh, and I hope you can uh, hear the humour in my voice. I hope uh, that uh, is coming across uh, fine, that um, Matthew has uh, got a deep love for the Catholic Church, and uh, and so he's more Catholic biased than uh, most Protestants are. Uh, but um, I enjoy uh, being lighthearted about uh, important matters. What's important is uh, people uh, believe in my son and what's important is my son uh, died uh, for people and uh, everyone uh, gets saved through the shed blood of my son. Um, and uh, it's not their belief in me that gets them to heaven, but uh, if their belief in me strengthens their faith in my son, well, that's a good thing. Um, so, um, what do you like about heaven? Um, I love, uh, I love that uh, Jesus uh, is the focus of heaven. I love uh, the idea that uh, people uh, love my son. Now, I understand. that Jesus was incarnated on earth. I understand that Jesus had a life and a history before he came to earth. I believe, well, I know that before Jesus was born through me, Jesus existed. So Jesus is God and Jesus is a holy entity and he's a lot more experienced than any of us humans. And I understand that, but he's still my son. He's, he's still, so many parts of his personality came from him, him growing up and uh, he became the son of man through becoming a man. And uh, so when I say that uh, I'm pleased that the whole of heaven worships my son, I mean that as a mother, but I fully recognize that Jesus 
uh, is an entity above me and far exceeding me, and uh, I worship my own son. Um, and uh, but it doesn't take away the pride in a mother's heart to see her son recognized and in the greatest place in heaven. Jesus really is your answer. Uh, you may. Uh, read these books and uh, start running after saints and wanting to meet saints. But I can assure you, you'll only meet uh, true saints and you'll only develop uh, great relationships with saints if you first got a great relationship with Jesus. Jesus won't allow you uh, to start communicating with saints unless you've got a good relationship with him first. And so Jesus is the centre and he should uh, be your centre and uh, he should be the person that you worship, the person that you follow, the person that you strive to emulate uh, in everything that you do. Um, so I, I love, uh, I love uh, that heaven is founded and, and directed and centred on my son. Um, I'm uh, very much in love uh, with the father and he's uh, my father and um, uh, the father plays a big role in heaven and uh, I enjoy uh, worshipping uh, the father and um, I call him Papa and uh, um, I enjoy him uh, and I enjoy that he's given uh, heaven over to his son, uh, for his son to be the centre of heaven. Um, I enjoy uh, the creation that he created and continues to create. Um, uh, did you know that uh, in heaven, when an artist paints a landscape uh, picture with uh, trees and uh, animals in it, um, that uh, the landscape actually is created uh, by them painting that. And uh, there's an actual uh, tree that's planted uh, that gets created uh, by the artist, a stroke of, um, stroke of the paintbrush and when that painting's uh, uh, put up in a place that creates a portal that can take you to that place. Did you know that? That's another thing I love about heaven. Heaven is uh, always being created and always expanding. I love the people of heaven. I especially love... Um, I love interacting with people uh, from all sorts of people, from people who uh, barely made it into heaven through the skin of their teeth, like Paul writes, uh, people with little or no reward in heaven. I like uh, meeting them and inspiring them to follow after my son. Uh, I like uh, meeting people who have... Uh, done great exploits on earth and saved many souls and uh, done great kingdom exploits. I love uh, meeting them. I love meeting bush pastors and bush missionaries and uh, missionaries and uh, evangelists uh, from poor countries who sometimes have uh, died through a crocodile attack uh, crossing a river or or died from a hip hippopotamus or died from a lion who've uh, been killed as they've been traveling uh, to share the gospel and Satan's uh, killed them with an animal. I love meeting the poor ministers of the gospel. I love meeting the mighty ones from the West that have uh, accomplished great things. I really enjoyed meeting uh, Billy Graham face to face and uh, thanking him for all the souls that uh, he saved. And uh, he was uh, pleased to meet me and happy to meet me and was pleasantly surprised when I uh, took him out for lunch. And we had a great chat 
he uh, dearly loves uh, Jesus and uh, and so talking about Jesus was his favorite subject and so we had a great chat and uh, he's uh, been out for dinner with me and Jesus and the disciples and he's had a special time with us and uh, so I love uh, meeting uh, people uh, who've been in ministry uh, from all walks of life, uh, from from the poor ministers uh, to the wealthy ones, to from the ones in the east uh, to the ones in the west. I love uh, common Christians. Uh, I love uh, Christians who are advanced and uh, have the ability to talk to saints and talk to Jesus and uh, meet angels like Matthew. I love uh, meeting Christians who uh, have just sat in church and uh, haven't uh, grown so much and uh, just went to weekly church meetings but didn't read many books and uh, didn't pursue their Christianity like Bob, Matthew's father. Uh, I love uh, meeting Bob. Bob's uh, coming on uh, really well. Um, I love uh, meeting uh, all sorts of people and um, it, it's like uh, I'm uh, a tour guide. I, I do take people on tours of heaven, but I, I mainly do my best work uh, at cafes and restaurants, uh, just having face-to-face -face meetings with people. Sometimes I'll meet with a family and... I'll meet with a husband and wife, a former husband and wife and their children, if their children are in heaven, or I'll meet with the husband and wife um, and uh, we'll um, have a meeting together. Um, it's uh, not often that a whole family is in heaven. It takes a, a number of years before a whole family gets to heaven. But a hundred years ago, in the last hundred years, a whole family may come, like great grandparents and grandparents and parents, they may all be together in heaven. So I'll take all of them out uh, for a family meeting. And uh, you, you can see uh, where the seed of Jesus flows through the family and you can see the strengths and the giftings uh, in the families and see how the, the ministry of Jesus has flown through the family. Sometimes you, you meet a great grandfather that was a pastor, a grandfather that was a pastor, a father that was a pastor and a son that was a pastor. Um, it's great to see the heritage of Jesus passing through the generations. I'm not going to um, give you a message. Uh, what's the message uh, for us? I'm not going to answer that question. I'm just going to use up my time. Um, uh, speaking about heaven and the things I love about heaven, uh, I think my message has uh, been uh, pretty clear uh, with uh, what I've had to say so far. Um, your focus uh, in life uh, should be uh, becoming like Jesus. And you're going to uh, become like Jesus, uh, whether you do it on earth or whether you do it in heaven, you're going to uh, be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ at some stage. Um, it would be handy uh, for other people uh, if you did it on earth because more people would benefit uh, from uh, who you are. But uh, um, I just have uh, been touched on the shoulder uh, by Jesus and 
uh, he's um, he's compelling me to uh, give a message uh, uh, to uh, you. Uh, so, um, what is your message for us? Um, so, um, my message uh, for you is um, try and set a goal in life to develop the mind of Christ and uh, to have the ability to walk in the spirit. Go after those two things that you want to develop the mind of Christ to be able to think like Jesus and uh, behave like Jesus and uh, to be led with everything that you do by the Holy Spirit. Um, for instance, uh, Matthew started uh, these uh, chapters today uh, with uh, uh, visiting Rahab in heaven, and uh, there's nine, there's nine um, uh, interviews that he needs to do for his second book, and he started the first one thinking he'd just do a couple. Well, uh, this is the sixth one that he's done in a row, and uh, he was told. Uh, an hour ago that he's going to stay up tonight and finish the whole nine. That's walking in the spirit. That's an example of walking in the spirit. He started with one, which was half an hour, and then uh, he was inspired to do the next one. And by the time he'd done uh, six of them, then he was told to stay up for the night and do the whole nine. Um, that's an example of walking in the Spirit, um, having your life directed by the Holy Spirit. And um, so he'll have the energy to stay up tonight and, uh, and uh, do them, or he may uh, finish uh, the other three and go to sleep. Uh, but um, all he knows is before he goes to sleep, he will have done the whole nine. So set a goal uh, with your life to uh, develop the mind of Christ, to have the ability to think like Jesus and behave like Jesus and have the ability to be directed all day uh, long by the Holy Spirit. And... Uh, they're worthy goals. Of course, you can uh, work out what you're here for and do the Myers-Briggs analysis and work out your gifts and start to walk in your gifts. Uh, you can, um, the, the way to develop the mind of Christ is to understand what Jesus taught. And uh, so that would be found by uh, reading uh, the parables and understanding the parables and understanding the commandments of Jesus. That's how you'd get to the mind of Christ. And uh, by obeying uh, the commandments and the commandments in, in the letters in the Bible, um, taking every thought captive is how you'd learn to walk in the spirit. So that's all been covered so far in the books so far. And so... Uh, if you've got a highlighter and, and uh, understanding, you can highlight those parts, come back to it and apply it. But um, it's interesting, you don't uh, realise uh, in the book, but there was a large pause uh, in the video that created these books and... Uh, Matthew wasn't speaking and he was wondering why I wasn't speaking. And that's when Jesus came along and put his hand on my shoulder and said, uh, give the people a message from yourself. Um, and uh, that's what the message came out. Uh, but uh, Matthew couldn't speak uh, because uh, I wasn't speaking and so there was just an empty pause, uh, which is something you shouldn't do on radio. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, what I've had to say. 
um, and uh, if uh, you um, are doing a review on Amazon, uh, perhaps uh, this may be your favorite interview or one of your favorite interviews, please comment on Amazon and say uh, this was your favorite interview. Uh, tell the readers why they should uh, buy the book uh, and be encouraged. Uh, God bless you.